Hey guys, and you're welcome to Check My Guns. My name is Carl, and this video is going to be about this crazy looking rifle. It's Zomer and Okenfus Griff Repetirer. And it's just crazy. Straight full action with a ball pop all together. So let's check it out. Let's make a brief look into the history of this gun. Well, manufacturer is Zomer and Okenfuss, and you can probably guess that it comes from Germany. And this rifle was introduced in the year 1998 on a SHOT Show in Las Vegas and later on also on EVA in Nuremberg. And it must have been really something to look at because everything is made differently in this gun. You really need to read a manual before you take it out and shoot with it. But we will get to that later. Zomer and Okenfus were making basically three versions. First was sporting version, then there was a hunting version and also hunting match version. So what was the difference between those? Well, the sporting version had a different stock, different material. It was made out of plastic in colors like dark blue or dark red. And overall length was 85 centimeters. The hunting version is what we have here, was uh, shorter, Overall length is 80 centimeters and obviously the stock is made out of walnut. So yeah, wooden stock. And then there was also the hunting match version, which had a stainless steel barrel. Again, it was shorter, 80, 80 centimeters overall length. And again, it was a wooden stock. It had wooden stock. These rifles were in production in between years 1998 and year 2002. So no one really knows how many were actually made. I wasn't able to find any number, but they never got really popular. They were super expensive, super expensive to manufacture, super expensive to buy, actually. And they are just, you know, too weird to, to work with. I'll show you in a second how, how do you actually work with such a rifle. And they never got really popular. So um, it's just now a really nice piece of technology, nice piece of firearms history because Zomer and Okenfus ran out of business. They, they don't produce anything today. So yeah, let's look at this rifle a bit more closer. Let's take it apart and explain how it works. So let's look at this rifle from outside. Obviously it's a ball pop system. So here in the back, we have the bolt assembly. We have magazine here. We have also the firing hammer, but the trigger itself is here in the front. Here's the uh, button. When we push it, you can actually take the magazine out. There were magazines uh, with capacity of five rounds and 10 rounds. This one is five round magazine. And I usually have a real problem to put it back there with one hand. Now I got lucky, but it's way easier to operate it with both hands. Yeah, now it looks now it looks like it works as it should be. Here in the front we have we have the grip. Here's the grip safety, obviously. Here in the back uh, is the ejection port, which is on spring and opens when you pull the bolt back. If we look at here, here's actually where the barrel begins and the barrel goes all the way here in front. It's free floating, length of 62 centimeters with overall length of the rifle 80 centimeters, which makes it really, really good ratio, you know, with such a long barrel and overall length of the gun so, so short. This, this is the amazing thing about this rifle. And there is a scope mount here on the top. It looks like it's too high, but actually it's not because when you put your cheek here, you see straight through the scope. If we look from the other side, here we see sling swivels. At the trigger guard, if we look, here is actually a big cutout. And we will look, we will look at that in a moment when we show when I will show you how, how to cock this rifle. Here are markings: Zomere Okenfus GmbH. Caliber 7x64 and the serial number 1272. And you probably also notice another sling swivel and you cannot really reach the magazine from the other side of, of, of gun. So you can 
take it out and put it back only from the right side. And here we have rubberized butt, buttstock with uh, logo of Zomero Okenfus, S and O. Other than that, if we look here, here is the big empty space with a uh, trigger lever. So when you pull the trigger, that actually transfers the energy here to uh, release the hammer. So that's probably all from outside and we can look at it, how it works. And now I can show you how to operate with this rifle. So I put there an empty, empty case, empty round inside. So what do I do now? This is the locked position. So bolt is locked, ready to fire. So I press the grip safety. I just aim, press the trigger. So what do you do next? Well, you release the grip safety and you grab just the grip and pull it back, which ejects, or at first it opens this ejecting port, ejection window, and ejects the empty case out, and you're ready to, you know, load another round with pulling or pushing the grip into the front position. Well, let's stop for a moment and see that there is actually trigger staying in its position only thing moving is the grip and trigger guard there's there's the cutout in a trigger guard so the trigger can stay in a front which is another really crazy thing about this about this rifle so what do you do next you push the grip to the front position and you have to keep in mind the, not to push the grip safety because otherwise it gets stuck i can show you if i push the grip safety it doesn't lock in a front position so I have to release that and now it's locked and ready to fire so yeah the grip safety is really essential here so what do you do if you don't want to fire if you want to unload your rifle well again you grab the grip safety and you pull it out and push it up which works as safe way how to uh, unload your rifle because if it would be on only just pulling the grip back and forward you would probably slip somewhere and you know grab it accidentally or maybe fire with uh, your bolt not locked in the right position so the grip must be locked in the front and how to safely take it out you have to pull it pull the grip safety out push it up move it like one centimeter in a back position then you put the grip safety back and you are ready to unload your round or, or operate with your gun. One thing that really bothers me here is that the distance between the magazine and grip when it's in a back position because it happened to me many times that when I was when I was cycling I hit myself, I hit my hand a lot because of the magazine, because of the of this stock. It's not that big deal when you when you have it in your shoulder, but when you, for example, operate around your waist, I was hitting myself all the time. Another thing which might bother someone is that here's actually the chamber. Here's where the bolt locks and the round is somewhere in between here. So that's actually the place where you basically put your chin. So you have your face directly on the chamber, which doesn't make you feel really good or safe but yeah that's how that's how they made it they how that's how they achieved such a length of, of this rifle so now I think we are ready to take it apart and I'll show you how it works inside and finally we can take this rifle apart so what you do is you turn this uneven nut till you hear the click then you push it through take out the butt plate and now if I turn it like this you see that actually the whole rifle is built around this frame made out of aluminium in the shape of letter H which goes from here up to here in the front so I open the ejection port window slide this cover off and now we actually see the action so here's the top of the magazine here's the bolt now it's locked and here is the hammer, which when you press the trigger, fires and hits here the firing pin on the bolt, which is extended into the left side. So if we unlock the bolt, you see that it goes down 
the locking mechanism mechanism works the way that the final movement goes up and it locks into the recesses here in the barrel. But the bolt is carried around uh, by these rails inside the frame. So yeah, when you move the grip, it moves along with it. And if we want to take it out, we have to align it with these recesses in the frame, which takes a bit of practice. But yeah, this is the bolt. This is the bolt. It's super small, super compact. Here's the serial number 272. Here you have the firing pin. Here is the spring-loaded ejector. Here is the extractor. And actually it has six locking locks. One, two, three, four, five, six. The final movement goes up, so that's how it you know, locks into the recesses in, in, the, in the barrel and makes it withstand a serious pressure. So this rifle was made also in a calibers like 300 Winchester Magnum or 416 Remington Magnum. So if I put it back, slide it like this, it locks in the position. So if I unlock it again, interesting thing is, if I lock it, that now the firing, the hammer hits the firing pin which is what we want when it's locked. But if we unlock it and pull it back, this slide comes in a bag. So it, now the trigger is locked. But if you have a malfunction or somehow the hammer is released, it's not going to hit the firing pin. It's going to hit the slide instead, which is a really cool safety feature. So it won't, you know, fire, which makes it again, really, really cool. And if I lock it or yeah, lock it and we look this way, actually we realize that the, the magazine is not there, you know, vertically. It's actually angled because you can reach it only from the right side. So they decided to put it there under angle. So nothing is really the way you would expect. So yeah, that is probably all. And now I should put it back together. And now we can take it to the shooting range and see what it can do. So we finally get out and because it's hunting rifle, we should test it somewhere out. Not in a shooting range, but in a wilderness. So I have three rounds, seven by 64 let's put it in and see how it how horrible it is to work with such a gun so yeah but first malfunction let's see what's the problem here yeah and we're ready to fire. It doesn't seem to be working properly with this kind of ammunition because the rounds are actually blocking the system to go back. Damn, so let me figure out what's wrong with this rifle and We'll continue shooting. So I figured out that I wasn't just pulling it strong enough to eject the shell. So now I took off the cover so we can see exactly how it works. So I'll... <laughs> Wait. Now it's properly there and that's how it grabs the ammo. It's locked and I'm ready to fire. So yeah, it works, but you damn have to get used to that. Let's try it again. Another thing we found out, we are using the SNB soft point ammunition. And if we put the magazine inside, which is a nightmare to do, you cannot really 
pull the bolt back because it gets stuck with the ammo. We have to push it down. It's too short. Otherwise, it would be underneath the the, the bolt, and it would be easier to just pull it back and grab the ammo. So now I'll try to fire three rounds as fast as I can. So we'll see if, if it's really faster than bolt action, for example. It's not, it's just too complicated to work with. Come on. <sighs> I just cannot do it. I cannot do it because it's horrible to work with this kind of safety because when you're pulling it back, you have to put your hands off the safety and then put it back and grab it. You really, really have to get used to that and it just doesn't fit me. It's, it's crazy. Okay, so I'll give it one more shot because hopefully I learned how to operate with this rifle and it finally will look okay. Well, let's do this. I'm getting better, <laughs> but still, it's it's really crazy how to operate with such a rifle. Okay guys, so this is all for now. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, press like and subscribe, and we will see each other next time.